Now, on this show, what we've tried to do throughout the whole of this pandemic is get you the real facts from the people who know them. Uh, And, you know, you, you can read about it and, you know, people's opinion is added to that. It can be fake news. Uh, But we want to get you the actual people to say it as it is. So uh, we heard about this confirmed coronavirus case at Cowes Primary School and we thought we need to get someone on. So we're speaking to uh, the guy who's in charge of education for the Isle of Wight, the councillor in charge, Paul Brading. Welcome to the show, Paul. Yeah, good morning, Paul. Morning to you. So a big shock for the council? Um, It was a shock. It's, It's a horrible shock to have. But um, we have been planning since schools went back in September for when we have a, uh, an incident rather than uh, if, because that's the safest way to plan, I think. If you, if you assume it's going to happen, um, that's part of the planning process we've had in place. But, of course, it's a shock, and my, you know, my, my sympathies go out to you know, the, the pupil, family, and, and the whole school and the whole community, really, because it's not nice. But So we have been planning for when it happens rather than if. And where does this leave? You know, what what's the reaction of parents and other teachers across the Isle of Wight uh, when they heard this news? You know, are you getting any feedback from them? Uh, well, at the moment, I've, I've just been talking to the staff at Cows, to my public health uh, director uh, and uh, my director of uh, education, just to make sure that the, the situation we've got at the moment is being properly dealt with. Um, I've had no feedback. Uh, from other schools at this point, so my, my attention has been on, on Cowes Primary School, as it would be, because when the news broke, we've got to make sure we put plans in place, the correct plans in place, straight away. So I think it, um, everyone you know, realised it may happen, could happen, but we've been planning for when it does happen. And is this the only school or nursery on the Isle of Wight that's been affected? Well, no, there's one nursery in Sandown where the manageress, I believe, uh, has been confirmed with coronavirus, and that's been shut uh, for a two-week period. That happened the day before the story on on, on uh, Cows Primary School came out. Um, so we're just dealing with them as separate instances, but obviously we're dealing with them with the same professional public health guidance that we've been following the whole, right through the whole coronavirus process. And I'm assuming the schools that are affected, do they get deep cleaned? What happens? Well, what we first thing we do is we've talked to the school about the safety measure they've had in place. And the first thing at Cows was... Uh, the head teacher, uh, Stephanie Pricing, and all the staff have brilliantly made sure that the bubbles um, situation at Cowes Primary School was working really well. It's difficult in some schools, and Cowes is an example where, you know, it's a, a, a smaller, older school. The, the bubble scenario has been more difficult, but uh, they were 100% brilliant at doing so. So obviously, it's just that particular bubble, that particular class, and its teacher and its TA, teacher assistant, that uh, have needed to be off school now for two weeks. Um, the advice of Public Health England is that's the uh, correct process to do. At this point, the school doesn't need deep cleaning because it's um, you know, just focused on that particular bubble. Obviously, that classroom will be cleaned properly and deep cleaned, but not the whole school. It just relates to that particular bubble that has operated as a bubble since schools went back. So what message would you have, Paul, for parents listening to this that have just dropped their children off at school? Should they be concerned? No, I don't think they should. Um, it, uh, one thing about the virus was you can't work out where, where it came from. People are inquisitive and want to know how, the, how it's got in the school, how it's got in there. But the point is, it's not how, it's what you do about it. Cows Primary School has operated brilliantly since it reopened. Uh, the bubble scenario has still worked. There's been no cro- danger of cross-contamination. If there was, obviously public health guidance would be you know, to close the whole school. But the guidance at this point, because of the way the school's operated, is just to... Uh, have that particular bubble of 34 children, uh, the teacher and the teacher assistant, off school for two weeks um, to make sure there's no um, you know, cross-contamination within that bubble. Well, thank you very much, uh, Paul, for coming on the show. It's very much appreciated. Um, advice moving forward, what would you say to parents? Well, I think the first thing I want to say back at school, if I can, is obviously we put in place uh, home learning, so that the pupils in that class immediately now switch to the home learning program that all schools have had in place. We've got two weeks of home learning already stored up for them. Advice in general to, to parents is if there are any concerns at all, please talk to the school. Um, it's up to the school to tell the parents, you know, what measure they put in place. And, and the, yeah, the pupils themselves, I'm sure, have come home and told their parents how different school looks, how different school feels. And if pupils raise any concerns with parents when they come home saying, I, I saw this today, didn't like it, 
it's up to the parents to raise that with the school so the school can make sure they address it. But all schools have worked so hard on the island to get open again. Um, I hope this is, you know, a one-off isolated instance, but we are prepared fully um, to close down bubbles in schools or take bigger action if necessary. So please, it's right that children are back in school. The risks, Public Health England is saying the risks to young children are extremely low of them getting it or um, carrying it. But obviously we need to take every case very seriously which we will do and continue to do so. And finally, Paul, uh, how is the uh, the return to school been? Have you found that majority of pupils have turned up at school or have you got a lot of people that aren't sending their children back to school? Unfortunately, we've done really, really well. I don't like stats sometimes, but I think it's good stats to show. The Isle of Wight is really doing well at getting pupils back into school. Um, there's a daily return that needs to go in and then we get stats the following day. Um, the last set of stats I had was last Wednesday, obviously last Thursday was a bit of a trouble on the mainland with, uh, you know, that horrible bus crash in Winchester. We were running um, at primary level, we were running at 93% of pupils back in school. National average was 87%. And at secondary, we were at 91%. National average was 83%. So we are doing really well. And obviously, we'd always have some pupils off this time of year from, you know, normal, normal colds and normal illnesses. But we are doing really well at getting pupils back into school. And the feedback from all the heads is the pupils are, are loving being back, loving being with their friends again, getting back to some sort of normality in, in school life. You know, keen to learn, but equally recognising that uh, schools are different. They need to make sure they keep their cleanliness up, you know, and the schools are, are sort of doing the staggered starts, the staggered finishes, staggered breaks, staggered lunches. But all pupils have adapted brilliantly and all staff have adapted brilliantly. And we're in a good place going forward. Paul Again, Brading. Education is key. Paul Brading, Councillor Paul Brading, thank you so much for coming on the show. And perhaps welcome, you'll Paul. keep us updated as uh, as it goes on. But uh, we appreciate Happy your time so. this morning. Thank you very much. That is Paul Brading. He is the Councillor in charge of education on the Isle of Wight.